When I'm not sat in front of this camera talking about wine, you'll tend to find me sat in front of the TV watching other people talk about wine. There are some really fantastic wine documentaries out there to enjoy. So today I thought I'd take you through some of the wine documentaries that I've enjoyed and would recommend. Hello and welcome to The Great Explorer where we celebrate the world of wine. On this channel we do wine education, product reviews and lots of tastings. So if you're interested in wine, consider subscribing. Now, as you can imagine, there are lots of documentaries about the subject of wine. Wine is becoming ever more popular year on year. And so there's a lot to talk about when it comes to the industry, uh, some of the people involved in the industry, the stories of wine, and also some of the controversies as well. I'm gonna talk through some of the wine documentaries that I've enjoyed over the last few years, and just give a little bit of information about each one. Wherever possible, I'm gonna provide links to those documentaries, or at least be able to tell you where you're gonna be able to view them. So the first one I want to come to is a documentary from the year 2004 and it's called Mondo Vino. And this is a slightly older documentary now, although I'm sure you'll be able to find it through places like iTunes, Amazon. It's not on Netflix as, as far as I'm aware here in the UK. When I watched it, I actually managed to watch it via YouTube with subtitles. When it was originally released back in 2004, it was actually nominated for a Palme d'Or at the Cannes Film Festival. And what it does is it tells the story of uh, the wine industry and whether or not it's, been, it's losing its soul to some of the bigger organizations. So there's a real contrast in storytelling between some of our smaller producers uh, as well as some of the more global producers. And it introduces the concept of uh, global winemakers, kind of flying winemakers who have a responsibility globally uh, for vineyards and will, you know, like I say, literally fly in to a particular region, advise that vineyard on what they need to do, and then they're off to the next one. And so it does follow uh, a winemaker in this way, as well as following some of the smaller winemakers and some of the larger ones. Things like Robert Mondavi is featured in this particular documentary. And it's just a really interesting insight into big companies versus small companies, you know, corporations versus uh, small producers with their own plot of land. And so definitely one that I would recommend. My second recommendation is a 2016 documentary that for, uh, for me, I've been able to watch through Netflix, so it's still available there. And it's called Sour Grapes and it's the story of an Indonesian man by the name of Rudy Kanoan who duped a lot of people um, into buying fake counterfeit bottles of wine. It's a really fascinating story looking at why wine has become more desirable and going through some of the things that Rudy had gotten himself involved with. Now Rudy himself declined to be interviewed for this particular documentary, although there are lots of other individuals who played a part in this particular case um, who, who have taken part in the documentary. Uh, one winemaker in particular, uh, Laurent Ponceau, um, plays a pivotal role in this particular documentary. Uh, he was one of the first to identify that some of the wines from his own chateau that were being auctioned weren't necessarily the real thing. There are also some really interesting characters who, who kind of refuse to believe that Rudy has done anything wrong. Um, and I get that, they're, they're his friends uh, and they're standing by their friend. There are also some characters in this documentary who I would describe as complete idiots and I'll leave that up to yourself to work out who they are. So definitely check this story out. It is a fascinating story. The, the legacy of Rudy Kanioan uh, is still felt to this day and will be felt for many years to come. So it's a very interesting watch. The next documentary that I want to talk about is from 2013. It's an Australian documentary by the name of Red Obsession. Um, the reason for the title Red Obsession is it focuses on Bordeaux and how Bordeaux wines over the last few years have become ever more desirable. And it focuses on the Chinese market for Bordeaux wines and how you know a lot of people with a lot of money are willing to spend a lot of money on these wines. Now, it does raise some interesting questions around do they want these wines because they want to drink and enjoy these wines or do they want these wines because they just want to have them they've got the money to spend and they just want to buy whatever and you know going through watching some of the people be interviewed 
Money clearly is no object for them. They couldn't care less that other people aren't gonna to get to enjoy these wines. So they're bidding absolutely ridiculous sums of money to be able to own them. And of course, you know, some things only ever worth what someone's willing to pay to have that thing. But it is disappointing that the Bordeaux market for most people now is unobtainable. And I get that people want to have the cachet that's attached with having some of these things. But in this way, you know, I'm never gonna to get to try some of these Bordeaux wines. I'm simply never gonna be able to afford them. And it's because people with far too much money um, and, and too much kind of spare money, if you like, uh, are gonna just be able to snap these things up because it's easy to do for them. So Red Obsession is a really good look at um, Chinese influence on the prices of Bordeaux. You know, lots of chateaus now are owned by rich Chinese families. Uh, China itself is, is breaking into the wine market. They're starting to make inroads into that market as well. So I'm not certainly not saying that, you know, the Chinese market is a terrible thing. Them injecting money into the wine industry is good. But I do think some characters featured in the documentary kind of need to take a look at themselves and ask themselves, what, why are they doing this? What's their motivation behind wanting to own some, some Bordeaux wine? The next one I want to talk about, and, and for me it's probably the most influential uh, in getting me into wine that little bit more, is the documentary Somme, uh, which is a 2013 um, documentary uh, from the United States, which focuses itself on the Master Sommelier exam. And in particular, it's following the paths of four individuals who are about to take their Master Sommelier exam. So, the documentary joins us just a few weeks before they're due to take the exam and you really get an insight into what's going to be required to, to take the exam, to pass the exam and how these four individuals have bonded um, over their love of wine but also you know, really there to support each other through the process. For me, it's definitely been an inspiration for me wanting to learn more about wine. Um, there's certainly some things that happened in that documentary that I took on from a wine study in perspective. You know, one of the, uh, one of the individuals in the um, documentary is obsessed with cards, little cards to tutor himself, to teach himself to how to learn more about wine. You know, these flashcards were something that I took on through my own wine study, but it's also incredibly fascinating to watch them go through an approach to tasting, how they're able to recall the regions, the sub-regions, the vintages for any particular wine that they're tasting blind is, is incredible. And the nice thing about the documentary as well is you get to have interviews with lots of other master sommeliers. So you really hear from the experts about what it was for them to go through the exam and how they were able to tutor some of these new upcoming uh, sommeliers to pass the exam as well. So Somme is the one for me that really got me started in uh, appreciating wine a lot more and it's really fantastic. And so the last one that I'm going to talk about is actually a follow-up to the Som documentary from 2013. Som Into the Bottle uh, was released in 2016, if, if my memory serves me correctly, and, and takes a look at some of the great wine stories uh, that we have. So it's picked out some specific stories around wine. Uh, some of them are based on family conflicts that might have taken place in the past. Some of them are around cost of wine, some of them are around you know, wine and food pairings. There's just some really interesting characters in this documentary with some great stories to tell. There's a story about the Mathiasen winery uh, in California that was subject to an earthquake and what that meant. Uh, there's some further interviews with Fred Dame who features on the first documentary and is again featured here. He's, he's, a, he's a key character in these documentaries. And there's just some really great stories. They talk about wine points. Uh, they talk about the cost of wine. Uh, they talk about um, the history of wine as well, you know. And what they do is they bring back some of those sommeliers from the first documentary and they get them to open and enjoy some really special bottles. So again, Somme Into the Bottle, another fantastic documentary, definitely one I would recommend. But over to you, what have you been watching? What could you recommend for me to watch? Let me know in the comments section below. I'm the Grape Explorer. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Cheers.